seated. God is good. I want to say we appreciate everyone here today. I want you guys, everybody here in this house to feel welcome. This is your church. I want you to be involved in this church and uh, you got a place here today and we appreciate you. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate everything that everybody does around here. And if you got anybody wants something to do around here, there's plenty. I want you to feel a part of this. This is something bigger than we are, bigger than any one individual. It's good living for God. Trio's going to sing today. We ask you to worship with them as they sing.
sometimes it's like a what do they say about putting a frog in water and they slowly turn the heat up and the frog will just sit there until the water's boiling and he's cooked it's just a you just live life not even realizing that you need some freedom and you need to have some liberty and to be set free and he died for that right. he wants you to be free they say the truth shall make you free and we know that we pursue truth and uh, we just keep on getting freer and freer the more time goes by. More freedom, more freedom, more freedom. Not less, more freedom. Praise the Lord. He's a good God. Well, time for Brother Erickson. See how long his throat lasts. <laughs> Haven't heard him preach in a few weeks, so looking forward to that. Good pastor. Appreciate you very much. Love you. Appreciate you. Well, praise the Lord, church. Turning your attention this morning to the word of the Lord. Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. I'd like you to stand with me. I think we'll have this on the screen. And uh, so glad that everyone is here. God bless you. Uh, summer months, you know, people are gone, vacations, all sorts of things going on. But we are thankful when you keep making your way to the house of God when you're able. We understand that things come up. And um, uh, we appreciate knowing when you're gone, why you're gone, if that's okay with you, uh, that's always a nice, nice tr thing to know. Um, but we are so thankful that you're here. Mark 10, 13 through 16. And they brought young children to him that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But Jesus saw it. He was displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, and put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Praise the Lord. I'm just preaching a very simple thought today. Um, if I give you the title, you already know where I'm going, but it's okay. Don't be too big for God. Don't be too big for God. I didn't mean this message to follow our Bible study this morning, but nonetheless, it is... Uh, your second chapter of this book I've been preaching this morning. Uh, we, want, we want people, you and I, to let God be who God wants to be in our life. We want to listen to God. 
We want to be receptive to his word. We want to honor God in our life. And it's possible through this illustration of scripture today, it's possible for us to think that we are wrong when we trust the Lord in our life. And I don't want that. I want you to be able to say, no matter what your age is today, it doesn't matter. We're not talking about being immature. We're not talking about not uh, being responsible. We're not talking about being the leader of your household or having a good job. All those things are necessary, I know. But, oh, I want you to keep God with the right thinking in your life today that you can ask him anything, anytime, and know that he wants to touch you. He wants to hold you. Amen. Don't be too big for God. Lord, I pray that you would bless your word. Lord, that you'd speak to us today. Lord, thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy in our lives. God, we, we need this. Lord, we don't want to be thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. We don't want to, Lord, think that we are too mature for these things. But, Lord, allow us to think again what was, Lord, the focus of a child and what you spoke of that day. And, Lord, let it become real in our lives. For I ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. Jesus loves children. The Jews of that day looked on children as a blessing, not as a burden. They were a treasure from God. Uh, they were never meant to be a liability. I honor our families who are willing to have children in this day and hour uh, there's a lot of things that would uh, detain us and keep us from that. Uh, of course, expenses and finances is a huge one in our world today that we live in. I'm thankful tonight, today, for the fact that we can take a few moments and just think about what it was that Jesus saw in children that was so important to him that he could say that literally you will not enter into the kingdom of God except you be as a little child. It was sorrowful. It was uh, not uh, what people wanted to be able to have a home that did not have children in it. And, and today our heart is out for anyone in that situation. God, God wanted us to be able to taste. And I, I encourage anyone today to... Uh, Enjoy the young people of this church. Enjoy, amen, when you work at the school or wherever you're working to be able to appreciate children uh, because there is certainly a uh, thinking in this culture, in this world we're living in today that children are uh, a liability. But God, I think, wants us to realize today that this was exactly God's plan for this thing to continue. Amen. It was customary for children for parents in that day, in Jesus' day, to bring their children to the rabbi for a blessing. It was, it was the typical, it was the normal. And so it was reasonable that day that, uh, in Mark, that the people of that day would bring the little ones to Jesus. I guess the disciples looked at his uh, value of time and his mission being so great to preach the gospel to every creature, that somehow they lost sight of the importance of children being part of that day in and day out process of God's plan. In Luke 18 and 15, uh, the Bible simply says this, and they brought unto him also infants that he would touch them. That was God's plan. He, uh, they uh, was not an age limitation here. It wasn't uh, just certain ones, but, but it was whoever saw the value of a child and wanted them to be blessed, Jesus said, 
there's room for that in the kingdom of God. And I'm appreciating that. And in Mark 9, 36 and 37, uh, and he took a child and set him. Now, this is, this is before our reading that we read in Mark chapter 10. This is some time before. And the theologians did not think that this happened all at once, but this was the preliminary or the earlier instance when Jesus was talking and dealing with children. And, they, and he took a child and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said unto them, Whosoever will receive one of such children in my name receiveth me, and whosoever will receive me receiveth not me, but him that sent me. So Jesus had been teaching his disciples prior to Mark chapter 10. You need to see that. You need to realize that this was not a new topic. This was not a new subject that day when Jesus became uh, unhappy with his disciples because they were mishandling the kids. Once again, somehow they had forgotten what he had been trying to teach them, or, or somehow they did not perceive the worth and the value of what he had been trying to convey to them to suffer not the little children to come unto me. Literally, Jesus referred here that children were a better example than adults were for the kingdom. Now, we need to get this clear today because, and just give me a few moments to, to, to look at different sides of the scripture with you. Um, I don't think that God is writing all of us off who are over the age of 11. <laughs> okay? Don't, don't become, uh, don't lose me here. But there was something about the way that children came to him. Something about the way that they trusted him even though he wasn't their daddy. Something about the way that his messages of the gospel, the kingdom, were, were received in a different light with the children than they were in the adults. Somehow the, the cares of life and the, and, and the, and the priorities of life and, and our goals and our, our vision of what we expect in life and how we want to climb the ladder of success and, and we want great things for our homes and our families. It's as though they became of greater sense of worth and value than this desire of a child to be with Jesus as often as they could, to climb into his lap. It's as though Jesus was, would tell the children to behave not, not like adults, but to behave like children. And that he would model the kingdom of God in this light of how the children came and how they readily were willing and how that they were open-hearted and how they believed Jesus' words above the finality of life and all the things that we face. Somehow, Jesus latched onto this and he saw the great worth of a child, the way that they perceived and they trusted and they wanted to please the Lord in their life. Jesus in his ministry came in contact with many incredible people. I mean, he was with kings and with rulers, with priests, high priests, with rich men. I mean, there are a number of hats that we, we can read in scriptures where Jesus kind of brushed shoulders with them and, and, and preached the gospel. And yet, it's as though Jesus said, none knew me like a child knows me. It's, it's hard to fathom knowing the Lord today beyond our intellect. It's hard to surmise that we could, that we could draw closer to God in, in a way that doesn't require how many verses I can quote. 
It's not about how much I know about Jewish history. It's, it's not really about if I'm the pastor of the church or not. I need to come as a child before the Lord in my life. I need to have that desire that allows me to say some things are not the priority here when I come into Jesus' presence. Some things I've got to set aside and know that the Lord will take care of me and will help me. He is my guide. He is my answer. He's the one who's going to take care of me. None believed in him like a child did. Jesus never built his gospel on the kings or the priests or the dignitaries or the scholars or the rich. And yet he could take a child, not, not knowing any certain child in Scripture, we don't know the little boy's name that he set out there before them, and he said, this, this is my example. This is my illustration. And there must have been adults there like you and I that day that, that had to say, well, I, <laughs> like Nicodemus, can a man be born a second time in his mother's womb? <laughs> How do, how do I have a chance to be able to, to taste of this thinking of a child? And Jesus doesn't go into line-by-line line teachings on this in all of Scripture. We just know that there was something about the way a child could climb into his lap without fear. Some kind of a confidence that they knew that he would not hurt them, but he would only bless them. He never had them climb into his lap to rebuke them. He never had them climb into his lap to, to uh, be contrary to them or to hurt them. But it's like this, this mechanism that's in a child knowing who he can trust. Knowing that there's one who really cared and he would help me. Every message preached, every lesson that is taught, every truth in God's holy word becomes more and more and more understandable by you and I when we view the Lord as we should view him. That's the power of the gospel today, friend. I'm, I'm going slow. Bear with me. I, I, I don't mean to be teaching. I'm just trying to, I, I, hopefully we can bring this around. It's the way that I view the Lord has everything to do with what I can become in God's kingdom. The way I view him has everything to do Oh, Buck, you're a man that I honor to have all those children over here by you today. I'm coveting that. I have to chase them if I want to catch them. I have better luck outside after church playing tag than I do. Every single thing that God has to offer you today is more clear, is more understandable, is more touchable, is readily made for this exact moment. It's not something that we're putting into our archive of our brain saying, maybe someday I'll use that. But oh, if we could ever see the word of God today for now, if we could ever perceive it for the value it is right now, when we come as a child, just imagine what our lives would be like if we had the kind of faith that a child has. That's really what it is, isn't it? It's a blind faith. If we listen to the, the news, if we talk about women's liberation, if we talk about so many groups and organizations today, they would tell you, bless God, the children are better without the man in the household. 
men are bad. Oh, that is, we've got to get our kids past that. We've got to go back and build again. Something about that childlike faith that just simply knew that they were safe. Is that not a picture of peace that we speak of that Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Isn't that what you want today? We've had a lot of good speakers come through this church. I'm not saying there weren't many good ones before. I'm just saying since we've been here, what are we heading on? Three years now. I'm going to get old if I stay here too much longer. <laughs> And, and great men and women have come through here. Appreciate those good words we heard. Wasn't that incredible last Sunday? And Brother Foster the week before. And Brother Stevens. We are blessed to have Brother Stevens around. We've got we've to change the way that we think about the Lord. That's what this message is about today, is that we simply would trust him, that we aren't fearful that he's going to hurt us. I, too often times we come to God wanting something instead of wanting him. Too often we come with our want list, our Christmas, our Santa Claus list, as it were, instead of wanting his presence. The children wanted this presence. From everything I see, they didn't, they didn't bring to him a want list. They didn't come with, with their uh, excuses, or they didn't come with their sad stories of how poor their families were. At least I don't see it in the Scripture. They came to be with Jesus. I remember years ago, my mom and dad were part of the Methodist church, and uh, they were always very involved in the church. And um, uh, <clears throat> this was back when I was uh, pretty young. And, and there were those Sundays that I would harass my mother so much that she'd take me home and spank me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was always family... If you don't stop when we get home. <laughs> but, but the other side of that is the pastor at that time used to have a, a morning kids moment. And he'd have all the kids in the congregation come down and sit around him. That was pretty neat. And, and he would just tell some sort of a story kind of down on their level, if I can say it like that wasn't full of the woes of life. It wasn't full of statistics. It wasn't full of quotations. It was kind of just an allegory. It was just a symbolic story to bring about a good principle. I remember we'd run back to our pews. Suffer the little children come to, um, to come unto me. And you are the child he was talking to. I don't care what your age is today. I don't care the horrible things that have happened in your life. And I know that we have a, a, a knowledge of hurts and pains and sorrows through life that's so unfair. But this is the way the Lord helps us. This is his way to, to side pass, to bypass those things and take us straight to the very heart of the one who loves us. That's what Jesus saw in those children. It was, it was the fact that there were no detours, there were no sidelines, there was no manipulation, there was no who's who of the pecking order. They just simply came and he would pick them up and would hold them and hug them. I don't know how long he may have set them right down again. And Jesus one day took just that little child, well, I don't even know if it was a boy or a girl, and just set that child there in front of him. 
and said, this, this, this is what we need to focus on today. And I ask you today, would you allow yourself to, not, I'm not asking you to stop your job, to stop being the head of your household or the wife or important positions in life. We, we understand we're, we're, we're adults. We have to continue in those things. I'm only talking to you about how you make room for Jesus in your life. I'm just talking about today that you can feel the warmth, that you can feel his hug, that you can experience that place where all the scriptures become revealed to you when you feel the love of God as the centerpiece of everything. Would you stand with me? This is not the sermon that I have you running around the, alt the aisles, and it's not the one I've got you running to the altar. But I, I need to say to you today, I believe God wants us to hear this. I, I, don't be too big for your britches. Don't think of yourself as such an adult that you cannot allow yourself to think like a child concerning the Lord. You're busy you got schedules, you've got iPhones that keep you regulated. Made the prayer meeting yesterday. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. God is so good. Does this make sense today or am I, is this stupid? It's so much in the Bible, I can't, I can't deny it. I can't screw around and say it doesn't matter. That was just then. On the contrary. When, and Jesus rebuked them in Mark 10. That, that Greek word, therefore, it disquieted or what I put in my notes. That word for that in the Greek was that he was mad at those disciples. He, he was contrary-wise to, they, I don't know what they thought was important. I don't know what they thought was the, the protocol for being in his presence, but they missed it. They missed it. So I don't care how many hats you have to wear in your life, all the positions you hold, responsibilities you have how much you have to work how many hours a week what you have to do for your family all those things is not a part of this message today all that really matters is that we have the right thinking that we want his presence not just a protocol not just a service on Sunday morning because we always go to church. And then we could take a moment today and just reach out to him. Think of yourself with that childlike faith right now for a moment. Not of works that I have done. There's none good, no, not one. All of sin comes short of the glory of God. We're, we're not bringing things to God because that we are more honorable than another, than another man or woman. But today, Jesus wanted us to come to him because we like him, because we trust him, because we love him, because we know that he loves us, because everything falls in place. All my understanding of knowledge of the word of God all the revelation he's ever showed me, every great message I've heard preached brings me to this. I've got to draw closer to him. I've got to draw closer to him. I'm not too old. Sister Meg, I'm not too old. Thank God for your children in your home to help you remember each and every day. 
I get knocks. Our grandson there at the house with Drew. I look at knocks. I'm thinking, Drew, you used to be that age. I used to play with you. I'm thankful for that relationship God wants with you today. And I, I hope that you won't leave here feeling like I've shorted you on a good message. I want you to know today that I think we will draw closer to the Lord as we learn to draw closer to Him. Amen. Would you sing a song with us today? Don't be too big for God today. Don't lose a sense of priority today of what's really important. God's not asking you to be childish. He's asking you to approach Him like the children approached Him. Continue making the big bucks. Continue being the leader of your home. Continue working in your home. Continue touching shoulders with people today. Realize that you also will touch kings and scholars and anointed and priests and great men and women. But nothing is more important than my Jesus. Amen. Nothing. God, help me to change my view. The Bible said all things were made by him. But it doesn't stop there. It goes on to say, and all things were made for him. You have to realize today that every event of life is just another path that if you choose, you can come into his presence. Amen. Don't let the problems, though there are many, I'm sitting here with a few of my own today, but today, just desire him. Lord, I'm not going to come to you with a want list this morning. I'm not going to tell you what I need to happen this week. I'm just going to come with open heart, open mind, a sense of value, of safety, of your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. hear the Lord this morning whisper in your ear you can become anything you want to I believe in you
God bless you today. God is not trying to minimize our worth today. I don't mean to imply that. You are great men and women for God. I think he just wants to maximize our time with him. I think he just wants us to realize that the list of our needs is much smaller than we thought. We thought we had a list on all the stuff. He just wants to list his presence in our life. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day, week. Looking forward to Wednesday night to be with you. And then next Sunday is Father's Day. And uh, we will have breakfast. It will be for men and women at 9.30 in the fellowship hall. And then we'll have our Bible study. And then we'll come over for our service that morning. And um, uh, bring someone with you. Let's have a great time. And uh, we want to honor our dads, our fathers, men. Amen. And uh, try to have a message for men to challenge us in this crazy hour that we're living in. And God bless you. We love you, church. Have a wonderful day. Shake hands and be friendly. Amen. And uh, enjoy your week. In Jesus' name, amen.